what you had earlier, whether there's stuttering in the game, I wasn't really too sure why that was happening, but hopefully it's better now and, and it won't be happen happening in this game. New Zealand against Australia. For those who've just joined us, this is the Oceanic Qualifiers for the World Championships. Three best of threes between the two contestants to secure a slot in the land finals, Belgrade land finals, a 50% chance, pretty, pretty good chance for both teams. But Australia have definitely increased their, cha increased their chances. They've won the first game and the second game, um, they've won the first map. So if they take this map, if they win Mirage, they will have won 4-0 on the series um, of the three best of threes. And that's automatically them qualified to the Belgrade land finals. So Australia only 16 rounds away from... Uh, having a chance, having a, uh, a shot at making some big money and playing on the world stage against the rest of the world's best teams. Eight teams will qualify from Europe, three from Asia, two from South America, from uh, North America, sorry, one from South America and one from Africa. They'll be joined by uh, one of these two teams. New Zealand have a really, really steep hill to climb at the moment, a really st steep hill. So uh, I wish them the best of luck in this match. It's going to be very, very difficult. Mirage, not too sure whose choice it was. I think, I think it was Australia. Australia picked up Mirage, but and the, yeah, they they vetoed Mirage. But either way, it it really doesn't matter at the moment because I think no matter what map it is, Australia they're going to come out the better. Um, I, I I don't really see. New Zealand having much of a chance no matter what the map is. We start off the game with New Zealand on the CT side. And it's the strongest side here on Mirage and Zeus. He's in a great position. Oh, he only gets one frag. Doesn't go for the second. In fact, tries to play it smart. And the return will come almost immediately. And New Zealand, they're doing really good here on the pistol rounds with their USPs and P2Ks. They're really landing those headshots. Australia finally get the bomb planted after pushing in towards the site, but they've lost pretty much every single player. It's a 4v1 now. Off new. And with a great double coming in from Connector. That's the first round for New Zealand. It's a good start, but we've seen New Zealand pick up the pistol round more than once. I think three times out of four. No, not three times out of four. Three times out of... Wait, four times out of six. If my mathematics... Oh, four times out of five, if my mathematics is correct. Sorry, I'm trying to jumble up mathematics here. Um, not my strong point. But after that, they really weren't able to, to make much of it. They um, pretty much crumbled to the Australians, no matter what half they're on and no matter what map they're playing. And Mirage was the map that was played... Uh, the first map played in the last best of three, where we saw Australia win 16 to 7. Zussi starts it off with a frag on you still. This time he will stay alive after it, though they don't make the trade almost immediately. And Blackout pushes through the smoke from the side, picks up two, and this is a great round here from New Zealand. And that makes it 2 to nil. And somehow I've, I've lost my, my headphones under the wheel of, of my uh, wheelchair. That's great. First world problems. What can I say? A really, really nice, aggressive push from underpass. And that's two frags for him. Taking the initiative and playing a very, very dynamic CT. And you see a lot of terrorists get mid control by having two guys push from underpass. It happens a lot, uh, especially on eco rounds. And he just read that and uh, he positioned himself to uh, stop that from happening. But it's a bit of a dangerous move going aggressive on your own against an eco. You can just give away a weapon really, really easily, especially if it's you see three, two or three men charging you. You really, really have to land your shots. It's uh, it's very, very important. Short smoke from the terrorists. Zussi throws a nade. Doesn't do considerable damage on the Australian side. And this is looking good here for New Zealand. Three rounds up already on the CT side. And maybe this is the change that they wanted. The last time they played Mirage, they started off on the T side. They were only able to pick up three rounds. Picked up four on the CT side. 
Uh, by the time they got into the game, Australia was able to uh, finish off the job. Great flash there by the Australians. You still are picking up a frag and pushing in towards window. Blackout has support from Connector. Needs to check the flank because the terrorists are invading towards the A site. And Zeus is still holding Connector here from this position. He's got his teammate, Blackout. He's going to get shot down by you still on. That's his flank open. Ricky just on scopes at the wrong moment. Often he doesn't see him, and they're just completely broken down by the Australians. They didn't even have to push in towards any of the sites. They just picked them off from outside. Nicely done by Ricky. Don't know what the CTs were doing, move around like that. Just hold your position, hold your angle, and stick to it. Here's a window smoke from Ricky. Seagull playing the B site for New Zealand. Already in exchange of frags here, the Australians. And they take down two, but two are in return. Cookie firing through the smoke, but nobody's there to receive the bullets. Because the Australians are pushing towards the A side. It will be a split. One person coming in from mid towards connector, two from T ramp. Seagull's coming in to support the grenades, and it, they do know it's an A push. Off new. Holds the flank. He's able to take down. Nova. Australians are allowed to push into other players. JKS is, is confused as to why he's been given access and he, he will be checking CT spawn. Seiko throws a flash down. He came all the way from the B site to support. Here's the bomb being planted. Peaks gets the first frag. Doesn't have a lot of health on him. Both Seiko and Ofnu not looking too good. They just have to set up the. Oh, nicely done by Seiko. With eight health, he'll take down Ricky as well. And that's another round for New Zealand. And I was just about to say. Or about to think that it was just the same as the other maps, New Zealand. They pick up a couple of rounds and then Australia just regain control and completely dominate them. But it's actually different. It's different. Full buy from Australia. They with all the rifles and nades that they need. There's two Molotovs. Palace control. And uh, last time we saw the Australian planes under the leadership of uh, Sponge, a Vox MNR in game leader. They went for the A execute three times out of three. Almost every single round. Except for one where they tried to go for a fake A execute and go towards the B site. It didn't really work out for them. And we'll get the bomb plant. Pretty close. Palace, nice palace plant there. So they can just go hide in palace, back away. Nova's going to take this really, really dodgy corner, and it's a great crossfire setup. Oh, peaks just at the wrong moment, and this is really nicely done by Blackout. Two francs for him, and they might have saved the day. Really nicely done. Seiko gets the final one on Freg. On Ferg, sorry. On Freg. Gets the final one on Ferg, and that's another round for New Zealand. Good crossfire setup, but I don't really know why he peaked. Should have just stayed hidden, wait, waited for Blackout to push forward and uh, allow his teammates to take him out. Either way. Seiko. Won't find anyone at mid. It's going to be another A fake as the bomb goes towards the B site. By the Australian. So, uh, seems like it's an Aussie tactic. Or a sponge tactic. Or maybe both things are synonymous. So sponge means Aussie, Aussie means sponge. Sponge, not sponge. Push here from you still open, you'll get shot down. Cookie. Doing a great job holding the B site alone. And that fake just did not work again. It was too telegraphed, or it wasn't well executed, but New Zealand make it six to one now. Getting a bit more competitive. I think they pick up quite a few rounds already. And will they be able to continue with this momentum? That's the thing that we want to see right now. Off near this time at mid. Only with an M4. Zico 
makes a frag on you still up at the uh, B site. He checks the corner through the smoke just in case there's an DBD CT hiding behind that. There's a position here by Zeus. He's a bit out in the open, but it's not an orthodox position as well, so he can surprise his opponents if they decide to push through. The bomb is moving towards the B site right now. Rick gets the entry frag. This is very good here for Australia. They will be able to get access in towards the B site. Now the CTs are not really sure what to do, and the bomb is rotating towards the A site. They are going to rotate towards the B site, the CTs, and that's a great fake. This time around, the fake actually does pretty well indeed. Seacob, by the time that the terrorists move in towards the site, will be too far away to help Zussi, but Zussi can do the job. Nicely done by him as he takes down two of the terrorist players. He doesn't need the rest of his teammates. Zussi is definitely capable, and now it's just two of the terrorists remaining. Seiko's already there to support. He gets a frag on Ricky, and it's a 2v1. Off new coming up from the be from behind Nova. There's not much he can really do. The cavalry is here, but really, really nicely done by Zussi to pick up those two frags, because if he wasn't able to hold that spot and stay alive, it would have definitely been the round for Australia. Still, I mean, the A site is... You can definitely retake the A site. There are many entry points. But in a 2v3, it doesn't seem too likely. But New Zealand now, six runs ahead. Seiko starts it off with a frag on Nova. It's a full eco here by Australia as they save up money for their next buy round. Australia's at this moment in time. They're probably thinking, well, yeah, we've, we've given quite a few rounds. We, we can just play our game, but nothing to worry about. We've got a third map and another best of three, just in case a miracle happens for New Zealand. But... New Zealand players looking great. Three Exile 5 players for New Zealand. Two, sorry, for New Zealand. Nice the the side there. Blackout. With the support of off new of Seiko, sorry, Seiko with his orb. Make easy, easy work for that eco round by Australia. Seiko doesn't play as the AWPA for his side, Naya Wolves. It's actually the entry fragger. It's interesting to see him picking up the AWP in this matchup against New Zealand and not doing a bad job actually winning those 1v1s at mid. But right now, in the New Zealand side, they don't actually have a proper AWPA. Young played the AWP. Raz, who's in their lineup, played the op. But at the moment, the five guys that they've got they're all right for us, and uh, somebody had to pick up the slack. And Mirage is a map where a very good AWPA can make the difference for your team. And we've seen what Pasha can do with the op here on Mirage. We've seen what Snacks can do with the op on the B site players who will probably be seeing playing for Poland, the European qualifiers. Cookie. Relatively inexperienced, but doing a good job this game. Making sure there are no holes in the New Zealand defence. New Zealand will pick up yet another round. 9-1. to one. New Zealand now, looking pretty solid indeed. And I'm actually surprised, very, very surprised, to see how they're performing against Australia. And I don't know whether it's just overconfidence from the Australians or New Zealand getting really, really desperate, but they're doing a relatively good job here on the CT side. Australia going back to the bread and butter. A execute here. They'll throw the CT smoke, jungle smoke, push in towards the site, throw down a Molotov. In the ladder room, but look at this, Zussi, he's going to stop them in their tracks. Great aggressive push just at the right moment through the smoke. He still is on the other side, in fact, and he's going to smoke him off, but the bomb's down. I don't know why he's smoking him off like that. Getting a better position here, JKF, right in the open. He'll pick up a frag on Blackout, who charged needlessly forward. Now the CT is on his own. Zussi trying to defend the bomb. Still alive with barely any health, and it's absolute bananas right now. Cook it. Trying to support him from CT spawn. JKS finally takes him out. Picks up the bomb. It's a 2v1. They've salvaged this round after a great push from Zussi towards the T-ramp. And Cookie's on his own once more. And it might be another round. Or a second round, sorry, for Australia. 
Unless Cookie has something Cookie has something else to say about this. First frag for him. Now it's a 1v1 against JKS, the Vox Eminor player. We make short work of Cookie. And that's nine to two. left in the first half of this map. It's the second and the best of three if you just joined us. Of the second best of three between these two teams. Sadly today we don't have a colour commentator, it's a solo cast. Exchange of frags here towards a site. Australians come out the top with two men. New Zealand. Moving the uh, grip the iron grip that they had over the game as Australia is able to pick up another round. Now if Australia wins the next four that's very good. Six rounds on the T side is very very good indeed. So New Zealand have to be careful. Just because they've got nine rounds already doesn't mean that the game's the map's theirs. It's far from that. And Australia are proving that right this moment. 9-3, to three. luckily for New Zealand, they've got Ofnu, who has a ridiculous amount of money, so he's able to buy a FAMAS for a blackout, he gets armor. They've got a good amount of nades, not all the nades that they want, or could have, but it should be sufficient. No AWP on Seiko this time round. Zussi's really played great on the A site, he's known when to push, he's known when to back away, and he's known how to stay alive for his teammates. And Australia have realised that the weak point, though, however, even though zeus has been playing well, is the A site. Uh, double man stack at window here by the New Zealand players. By blackout and off new. Zeus at sandwich. He's got support from under the ladder. JKS through the smoke. Memorised the positions. He gets an easy frag. Zussi though returns with two. Really nicely done by him. But it's not enough. The terrorists have access on the site and they should be able to get the bomb plant. CT's coming in really quickly from connector. We've got Cookie from CT spawn. Ricky smokes off the whole site. And he will have time to plant the bomb. So 1v3. And right now, us, the New Zealand players are probably getting flashbacks. Last time they had a 1v3 was AZR, which they lost after a phenomenal play by him and Ricky's really playing his cards right, gets the frag, makes it 1v2, backs away, catches one of the CTs moving in towards Sandwich but is unable to finish off the job, Blackout takes him out in return and had he landed the headshot in that spray down, it probably would have been a different story but 10 to 3, New Zealand back in action with only two rounds left in the first half, the two rounds that New Zealand have to secure because you don't know, I mean Australia had a solid CT side when they last played Mirage against New Zealand, and they've got 12 rounds on the CT side. So if New Zealand pick up 12, it might not be enough. What they have to do with what they have, they have to... And also there's, the, 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 there's always that kind of morale and, and, and the psychological bonus of going into the second half with 12 rounds under your belt already. That's really important. And I think Counter-Strike is, 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 a, is a mental game. It's all about mental acumen. It's about playing your game under pressure. And uh, you guys have probably kind of experienced this. I mean, ha have you ever played Deathmatch and did really, really well? You land your headshots, you, you, you're landing crazy Scream-style shots. But when you get into the game, you just can't do that. And that's the mental aspect of the game. But oh goodness me, talking about the mental aspect, JKS just rips into the site, making it look far, far too easy. Two francs for him. Blackout gets one, but the return is almost immediate by Australia. And JKS makes it a third. A Vox Eminor player making short work of the A site defense by the CTs. And he was uh, a last minute replacement for Destiny, actually. We weren't expecting to see him today. JKS, who's the uh, entry fragger for 
the Vox MNR side. 1.19 rating. Fantastic. 19 years old. Young, full of talent. And there, there you get it. You still get the final kill. And that's 11 to 4. Australia pick up four rounds at the end. And uh, they should be quite happy about that. It was 9 to 1 at one period of time. The four rounds on the T side. They can definitely work with that. They got 12 rounds last time they played on the CT side, as we just mentioned before. So four could be more than enough. But the pistol round, as always, is uh, relatively important. It, it decides the economic path of the game for three rounds. Um, it's been more important in the past, but because of the ability of the, the because of how good the new or improved pistols are, it's made the second rounds or the force buys a bit more powerful, so that the pistols are not as important, but they still do have quite quite a bit of importance. There's been some engagement, but no deaths, no casualties yet. Oceanic ceasefire at the moment. Even terrorists here. Jungle smoke. Stair smoke. Seeker leading the way from Chetris. Finds. Ferg gets the frag as well. Nova still alive behind that box in the site. Zeusy takes him down though. And that's the uh, bomb site controlled, but Ricky's just above. Smokes dissipate. They have to be ready for this. Lands a sublime headshot with the USP. And now it's a 2v3. Not a lot of le health left on one of the Australian players. Ricky goes down to blackout. And like Art's killed in return, it's Zeusy on his own who we finished off. My you still up. And that's the pistol round for Australia. And it might be the horn that signals the return of the Australians back into the game. We should be able to pick up the next two rounds with relative ease. We will see a full force buy, or a full buy if you'd like to call it that, on the second round by New Zealand. And I've mentioned this before, I've had this chat before. They need to find a new word. They need to find a word for the second round buy because it's not a force buy. It's like a full buy. It's it's a full buy. It's a full buy. Either way, talking about full buys, they're actually going for a full eco. So what I said, just throw it, throw it away in the rubbish. It means absolute nonsense. Molotov down, and they burn. Oh wow. Oh my goodness, it's an inferno. Dante's inferno three. Will rip in pepperinos. Fried pepperinos. Australia will pick up the second round and New Zealand have gone for a full by the third round. Not a lot of nades, but uh, going for a very, very fast day push. Might get some flashes on top. There's a smoke, but it's slightly late. They're able to push through. Two francs here for New Zealand as they move towards the A site. It looks like Ricky's AFK. Oh, the camera's stuck on Ricky for some reason. Just missed three francs from Australia. Bombs planted here by New Zealand. And all of a sudden, Ofnu will return with two. JKS remaining. Oh, JKS. What a clutch by him with that P90. Picks up the last two frags and the momentum of that round just switched from both teams over and over again. They got the two entry frags. Three of them died. They got another two frags. And then JKS just came up with an amazing double kill. Nicely done by him. And he's just prov showing us why he's one of the best, if not the best player in the Oceanic region right now. Single-handedly taking apart New Zealand at the moment. Great score by him. They're pushing towards mid. Blackout firing away in the smoke. Bomb goes down as Seiko is destroyed by the M4. And uh, this eco round isn't really working out for them. Zussi does a cheeky one. Climbs up the ladder room. Fires away towards window and picks up a frag as well. He still has an AK-47 that he picked up from the CTs. He can do something with this. Sprays down, but it's not enough. Blackout pushes forward. He's just a moment too late. He's really, really aggressive here at the A site. Able to put himself in a good position in the site now. Good movement. Gets the bomb plants in here. Do we have the money then? And will he be able to win this 1v2 clutch? JKS says no. No chance. Like we had, you know, had seen before, Australia just—they're gonna come back. 
on the CT side and, and show a really dominating uh, CT side. But the thing is, at the moment, all New Zealand really have to do, they don't have to win the next five rounds in a row. They don't really have to do that. All they have to do is make sure that they win two out of three rounds or one out of two rounds and hurt the economy of Australia and, and force them onto ecos. I mean, on the T side, you can make money from the bombs and, and also the AKs are a bit cheaper, so the economy kind of favours the Ts slightly. And if they do that, since they're already three rounds ahead, they can find themselves winning at a score of 16 to 13 or 16 to 12. And it's definitely possible. I wouldn't expect them to win the next five in a row, but... Good favourable position here. They've got control of mid. They have Cookie, that connector, and he has to take the initiative. Offnu gets the entry frag. Support from his teammate is not there. I mean, Seiko is out in the middle of nowhere. He needs to get in there. He needs to get that angle with, this, with the rifle. Stop the cross from CT. JKS is going to push right through that jungle smoke. Find himself a frag. Oh, and another from Nova. And really nicely done by Nova and JKS. Good crossfire set up by them. And that's the thing. Seiko... Or Psycho, hope I'm pronouncing his name right, with that AWP, he did not use it. He did not hold an angle, he was just moving moving around and, and, and aiming at a position that's, that was already aimed at by one of his teammates. And that allowed JKS to just push through from jungle and, and, and get the frag, even though they had A-site control. Blackout this time round, playing with the AWP. That's probably because he got the uh, spawn for it. Blackout, who currently plays for Dire Wolves. He used to play for Streamline. In-game leader. Probably an in-game leader for the New Zealand side at the moment. And uh, he's the player that the team's probably looking forward to some uh, to, to, for, for some ideas to get out of this little mess that they're in. Cookie takes down your still on. Two-man attention now. JKS is on his own. He's had a phenomenal game though today, and he's definitely capable of winning this 1v3. Zeusy has something else to say about it though. 12 to 9, as New Zealand pick up a terrorist round. And look at the economy for Australia. Completely crushed. They've been losing a couple of guns every single round, and all it took was New Zealand stopping them from getting that buy bonus. Then Ryan Seiko is going to go for mid control on his own. Seems like they've read this properly and that they know that they're on an eco now. They've uh, done the count again. Look at, look at the positioning by the CT. They have got like a diagonal through the map. They're re they've, every single player has made a short angle between him and the moment of entry of the terrorists. And that's the best thing you can really do with a pistol. The Ricky gets the information that there's a terrorist there and he's gonna get shot down, he's in a corner, he can't get away. That's an easy frag for New Zealand. Entry frag there by Zussi. Oh, you're still a return though. And, uh, you're still on picking up that AWP from Seiko, from, Black, from Gla Blackout, sorry. Pick up a kill as well, JKS now with the AWP and it's a 1v1 all of a sudden. There's been a disastrous anti-eco around here by New Zealand and I don't know what went wrong there. All of a sudden, they lost three of their players. He gets, he, he has to pick up the, the, oh, just barely misses him through the smoke. Making sure he doesn't get peeked by him. Playing his cards right. Playing his smart. Knows that he was planting the bomb, tries to fire through the box there, but he's unable to land any shots and he'll take out Zussi this time round. Getting the better of him and getting the bomb defused as well. And that's a round for Australia. New Zealand, though, able to get the bomb plant, so they will have money for the next round. And should be able to get a, a pretty respectful buy as well. And look at the scores here. Pretty equal performance from the top three Australian players. On the other hand, Zussi, who's been... Uh, doing most of the heavy work for the New Zealand side. Seems like it's going to be the A execute from New Zealand, making a leaf out of Australia's journal. 
Oh, look at this, Ferg. Just times it perfectly. Here's the smokes go over and pushes forward. There's nobody peeking inside to stop them from doing this. And Ferg picks up a really, really nice triple kill there. Great positioning by him, and that's a round for Australia. And in those positions, when in those situations, when you see top teams play and they get ready for the A execute, they always have one person checking T ramp, always making sure that the CTs don't go for an aggressive push, especially if they don't throw down that smoke. There's a really high chance that one of the Australian players or one of the opponent players are going to go for that push from T ramp towards your positions. And if you've got your smokes out, or if you have just thrown your smokes, you're pretty ill-equipped to stop them. Eco round here by New Zealand. Australia should be able to equalise this, but we've seen. An upset before, this was a couple of rounds ago when Australia won their eco round somehow. I don't really know exactly how, but they did. Twelve to twelve, it's neck and neck, but the advantage is probably to the Australians who are playing on the stronger side at the moment. One of the New Zealand players is not too great right now. If they don't get any frags or get the bomb planted, they probably will be forced onto an eco again. And that would mean Australia 14 to 12 up and only two rounds away from finalizing their place in the land finals. You're still up. Picks up a frag on off new. They've lost two players already early on in the round. T-Ramp really, really well. Aggressive player, has the confidence and really timing that bounce of aggression very, very well is, uh, indeed. Ricky, the great shot on Seiko, had a millimeter or two to make that shot from, but he was walking, gave him a, a bigger chance or a better chance of uh, taking him out. Running it might have been a bit more difficult. Either way, Australia make it 13 to 12 here. New Zealand now. With not a lot of money in the pockets. Not a lot of money in the bank. They've gone for a force bike. I'm just doing a bit of ma a mental arithmetic right now. With this force buy, they can still go for a full buy of the next round, even if they lose it. So it's not really a bad idea. Jake, yes, gets dinked down to three health. Made a frag zone, he's got support from the team. It's great flashes there from the CTs, stopping the terrorists in their tracks. He still is there to support. It's a quick rotation from them as well. And they should have taken advantage, they might have been able to take advantage of this New Zealand, this fast rotation from Australia. To do a B site fake. And I wonder if Ferg, sorry, if not, not if Ferg, if Blackout has caught wind of that. And has put it in his uh, in his mind next time they decide to uh, execute an, a, a tactic. But I, I can assume that these two teams have not had a lot of practice together, playing with the lineups that they have. Bearing in mind that each lineup is 15 players, or a maximum of 15 players, and that this is the first qualifier, so they've not had time to really practice uh, against each other. And you can assume that any plays they make is are probably going to be relatively simple and that they don't really know how to read their opponents that well. I mean, they play each other in the leagues, in the Oceanic Leagues. Teams like Immunity, like Exile 5, Vox Eminor. So you can assume that they know quite a bit about each other and their play styles. As, I, as we mentioned earlier, New Zealand able to go for a full buy this round. And if I had Cassid with me, he would have said it like six rounds ago. And a guest, not guest, but he would have foreseen exactly when they're going to buy how much they'll have left. An aggressive play here by the CTs, and they only lose one player. In return, they take down four and take the round win as well. So you see on his own now, and it doesn't look too great for New Zealand. It seems like Australia are well on their way to securing their position in the land finals. Two rounds away, make it one. And Zussi is in a one and four situation with not a lot of health left on him. Right, it seems like what the majority of you had s had foreseen or had bet on. Australia winning this 
best of three. I think the odds for the last match were about 90 to 10. And I wouldn't really, well, I wouldn't say, n I'd say, okay, it doesn't really make a huge difference. I'd say 80 to 20, if that makes a difference, but I don't really think so. But definitely Australia were the favourites coming into this. And it's nice to see that New Zealand were able to pick up this many rounds as well in return. Entry frags coming in, but Australia return with three. And there's only two New Zealand players remaining. It seems like we're going to have the shortest possible scenario of these three best of threes, which is literally four maps. Um, we could have seen 12 maps, but we we're only going to see four because Australia have been able to win every single time. JKS has had a pretty solid game as well. There it is. Australia winning 16 to 12 on Mirage in the second map and taking the best of three. And that's the second best of three that they've taken as well, which means they go on and they qualify to the land finals in Belgrade. That'll happen. Uh, October the 8th to 11th, put that in your calendar just in case you haven't uh, already, but pretty, pretty fast, really, really fast end to the Oceanic Qualifiers. I was hoping that we'd get more maps and that we'd get more games, but the Australians were too good. I'm going to send a complaint, formal complaint to them. Oh, I'm going to send a complaint to the New Zealand players as well. They should have got more maps, should have been closer. Really sorry that the first map wasn't broadcasted live and that we were able to, unable to show you the second uh, um map as well because of the demo going crazy um, and also really sorry for all the broadcasting errors and, and problems that you have this is our first ever studio broadcast we it's very short notice um, we set it up really quickly and there's a lot of things that, that, that need changing and need improving so we we've no, we know that already and we know so we're really really sorry if the uh, broadcast has not been of, of good quality or it's not as good as you'd like to, s to see it or you'd like it to be or that is befitting to this tournament, but it will be better for the future uh, qualifiers and definitely the land final is going to be amazing. We're going to have it in the Sava Centre in Belgrade. I think it takes up 10,000 people or 8,000 people. It looks absolutely amazing. You can go to the website twc.e-frag.net to get more information about that. Uh, and also you can get more information about the whole World Championships there. I'll have the schedule, the teams. The next time you're going to see us here on eFrag TV will probably be the Balkan Super League Finals uh, coming up in the next couple of weeks. And then the South American and North American qualifiers starting from the 15th of June. So put that in your calendar as well. That'll be really, really nice to see, really uh, interesting matches. I've not seen any South American teams play except for Keed Stars. So Brazil is probably the only team I'll recognize players in. Other than that, it'll be really interesting uh, doing a bit of research on these players and finding out about them, about their playing play styles and seeing how they play. Like North America, you guys know very well, Canada, USA, and Mexico with two teams having a chance to go through. And earlier I was mentioning like Australia, New Zealand, 50-50. It's actually a higher, per chan uh, higher chance, higher percent chance in, in North America. There's a 60% chance of a team going through. Um, if, you if, you're, if you're, okay, I'd say more, more higher because, you know, USA and Canada, uh, I'd, I'd put on paper better, te better teams than, than have better teams than Mexico, but statistically it's 60%. Anyway. Uh, hope that you've enjoyed the broadcast and that we will see you in future renditions. Have a wonderful evening, morning, afternoon, whatever it is where you are. And we'll see you guys really, really soon. Take care.